Hi, my name is Alice, and you're listening to Sounds of Reason, brought to you by Sea Monster Productions. Today, I'll be talking about how I consumed progressive and conservative media for 12 months. Now, I actually did an Instagram poll um, seeing just kind of what people were thinking when they think of politics, and I asked, you know, do you like talking about politics? Um, what are your political ideologies that you align with? And, you know, do you, you know, is it okay to discuss sex, religion and politics at the dinner table with a bunch of people? And I guess the consensus was that people generally do enjoy talking about politics, although the to be fair, the poll only allowed for yes and no, and a lot of people were messaging me saying, what about depends, which is fair. Um, I only got three answers about the political ideology one, which is fair, I get it. People don't want to expand on Instagram about their political beliefs, I get it. But I was curious, you know, I, I'm curious about these things. And um, I got one troll answer, which was really unhelpful, it made me laugh, but it was kind of useless to me um I got one other per and then two other people gave me a, you know an answer which was I guess enough um and then I to the question about you know discussing sex religion politics with you know a bunch of people at a dinner table I mean people were up for it but I also think that because people when they think about that situation because I think people have mostly been in those types of situations where you're in a group setting, someone says something political and then it kind of brings this massive conversation, you know, and you're just kind of sitting there either really into it or you're kind of sitting back watching an explosion happen. And I think, you know, if you've had negative experiences in those situations, you're probably not going to want to be like, yeah, I want to do that in group settings, totally. And I also think it depends for people, like, I think it depends who the people are in that group that they're talking about this certain political issue with. And I think it also depends what the political issue is. And I guess it brings me to this challenge that I have done for the last 12 months. And I know that sounds really exhausting. The idea of consuming, consciously consuming media for 12 months, especially when it's completely directed at politics sounds exhausting and frankly it was <laughs> um you know obviously i'm i'm already someone who likes to watch the news or read an article like i i've never been you know that's not something that is completely foreign to me in terms of my day-to-day -day routine but for this challenge specifically, I wanted it to be a conscious thing. I wanted to spend at least a minimum every day, at least an hour, directed at me consuming both progressive and conservative media. And I will admit, some days I, you know, would watch more pro more progressive leaning stuff and then some days I would watch you know more conservative stuff um, and then there would be some days that I would literally only spend an hour and then there would be some days where I spent up to six hours or more watching stuff and I think or and when I say watching stuff like I mean also like listening to podcasts or you know reading articles like I really tried not to only watch content because obviously you're only going to reach a certain group of people if you do it that way so it's important to kind of like look at different ways that you know politics is being talked about um and I also made sure to have conversations with people I you know as much as I wanted to be consuming it I also wanted to be talking about it so by now I am pretty exhausted by politics must be wondering, Alice, why the fuck would you want to do this and put yourself through this for 12 months? And you might be thinking that whether you're more progressive or more conservative, you might just be thinking why? Like that just sounds exhausting. And yes, it was. But 
it was deeply important to me to do this. And I'll give you kind of the main reasons as to why I did this challenge. And I also want to say this because I want you to do something like this. I'm not telling you you need to go out for 12 months and actively consume media from both sides. You know, I that's not what I'm saying necessarily. But I think the kind of heart of what this was about for me was confronting my beliefs and confronting my opinions and my political views and kind of going into it with being open-minded but also being responsible. I think when we consume things, sometimes we don't acknowledge what the person's credentials are or you know the way that they're talking which could be considered maybe you know um they're using logical fallacies in their arguments which I will get into but you know just things that maybe could make someone less credible and if you if you start consuming that to a large degree you might be doing a disservice to the whole challenge in itself because you're not responsibly researching who you're consuming your media from. Anyway, I wanted to get to the core of it and just challenge myself. You know, I've always been into challenging myself. You've seen me do running challenges and, you know, I've spoken on here about specific emotional challenges that I've had to overcome. And I think for me as a person, I just enjoy the idea of being uncomfortable and I think that's really what it was about for me is I had to sit with so many things that made me uncomfortable and I think a lot of the times and I can only speak for myself I'm not going to try and speak for everyone because but I think sometimes when for me personally something would make me uncomfortable I would just shut it off, not consume it and just move on with my life. And I want to make a clear dis- distinction. There's a difference between something being outrageously offensive and, you know, maybe even, you know, disgusting to the point where you don't even want to consume it because there's actually no benefit. Totally agree with that. If that's not, you know, I'm not forcing anyone to watch anything they don't want to watch. Being uncomfortable with someone's different opinion to you is a different feeling to something being like really like either you know it's emotionally triggering or you know distressing or traumatic like that I want to make that a distinction because I think sometimes I personally was allowing myself to not consume things just because I was slightly uncomfortable and that the person had a different opinion to me and I think that that is dangerous. I think I want to get to a point and I think I have reached that point because I've literally done this for 12 months now. I've reached a point where I can watch something, I can read something and I can consume something without it being this kind of visceral, I'm uncomfortable, I just want to switch this off. I feel like now I'm getting better at just being like, okay, let me hear what this person is saying Let me decide whether or not they're credible because that's also part of it. Let me also decide, you know, are they using any kind of logical fallacies in their arguments? You know, is there nuance? And once I've decided all of that, I then go, okay, well, this is their points. These are my rebuttal points. End of story. I disagree. Here are my points. There are your points. Cool. Um, But that's not always how it goes. You know, I had moments during this challenge, which I'll get into, where I wanted to slam the computer shut and be like, fuck you, what the fuck? Like, so angry and so emotional. And I think sometimes there is this kind kind of weird thing that started to occur where as soon as you're emotional or angry within the political political realm, that that makes you not credible or that you're just kind of like, I don't know, you, you've seen the headlines, you know, whiny leftist, crybaby, you know, snowflake, blah, blah, blah. It's like, please, sometimes politics is emotional. Sometimes it is infuriating and... To, to say that we are not going to have emotional reactions to things that can be emotional for people is stupid. 
And I completely reject when people say that. However, I also understand on the other end when people get frustrated that someone is coming into a conversation, a disagreement with so much emotion that they almost cannot have a political conversation and it it almost is counterproductive because you can't actually get the two points across that you're trying to make and I totally respect that but I also think we have to acknowledge that in some political conversations arguments debates whatever that there are going to be emotions that there is going to be anger you know facts don't care about your feelings it's like well yeah that's all well and good when it doesn't affect you but I think we have to to a degree acknowledge that people are gonna get upset that these are upsetting topics for a lot of people okay (laughs) and I recognize that and I also recognize on the other end that I didn't want just I didn't want to just be emotional and that was a big factor into me watching this content and it making me uncomfortable. I didn't always want to just have that I'm going to slam my computer shut reaction. I didn't want to do that. And that was my, that's my personal decision. You know, I'm again, not telling you how to react to certain things. It's just personally me. I don't want to react like that. I want to come into a situation and sit down with someone that I disagree with and be like, well, here are my opinions. Here are my beliefs. Let's hear yours and I'll give you my rebuttal just like you're going to give me your rebuttal. Obviously, I've outlined a couple reasons already why I did this challenge, but one of the main, main, main reasons was because I felt insecure. I did. I was, and I was scared. And, you know, I think when I realized that I was insecure about my political beliefs, it wasn't because I didn't believe that they were actually what I aligned with. It's because I didn't feel confident enough that I could bring to the table kind of reasoning and uh, commitment to those beliefs. I felt in some situations and with some political beliefs that I held, or a lot of them actually, that I didn't have enough, you know, confidence with them. And I'm not saying that everyone needs to have that confidence because fuck people have lives and I think that's also something that we forget about sometimes like yes sometimes it is a privilege to completely shut politics out of your life because it doesn't affect you but I also think on the other end it's kind of a privilege to do what I just did to consume media for 12 months actively and trying to dissect every belief that I've ever had and the reasoning and the stats and the facts to back it up. I also think that is a privilege in itself because fuck, people don't have time for that shit. Like some people have really intense, busy ass lives. Not to say I don't. I, you know, I'm busy sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I don't want to make it seem like I've literally just sat on the couch for 12 months and just watched TV. That is not the case. Um, but in saying that, I do want to make that, you know, I do want to point that out that, you know, on one end, it's a privilege and on the other end, it's a privilege too, you know. But in saying all that, I felt insecure and I felt that I lacked that confidence. And I also was scared. I, w- I think that sometimes it kind of links in with procrastination. Like sometimes the reason we procrastinate in life is actually because we're just fearing the unknown. And it's not actually about laziness. It's actually just a genuine fear of having to do that thing that we're putting off. And I think for me, it was the same thing with this. I was fearing the unknown. I was scared about what I was going to find. And I know that sounds really bad because it's like, well, Jesus Christ, what were your beliefs? Why were you so scared? Like, what was going to scare you so much? Did you be- did you think that you're going to like somehow be indoctrinated by the, you know, political beliefs that you didn't align with in the first place? It's like, well, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I think I was just, I was just scared. I was scared about, delving into a complicated world of politics and also I sometimes don't feel smart enough and I think it comes down to that for some people they don't feel they are sufficient in reading viewing or consuming content that is sometimes hard to understand and I think for me 
I take kind of a few goes at stuff to like get it. And and sometimes there have been moments throughout this challenge where I have rewatched like hours of content 